I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 12th of October, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today, we're going to be going over the rumors that have come out in just the last few days about new infrastructure upgrades happening here in Nicaragua. We've got some exciting stuff that we think is actually happening. We've double checked some of these things. These are pretty likely to actually be moving forward and they make a lot of sense. So we're going to talk about what those are, why they're important to us, why we think that they're likely to actually be moving forward and talk about some things that are definitely not moving forward. We'll get to all of that right after the bump. my channel for a long time or spent any amount of time doing research on Nicaragua, you will know that Nicaragua is no stranger to rumors about infrastructure, most notably the Nicaragua Canal, which has been kind of an idea since about 150 years ago and has been a famous false news item for a really long time. It is the absolute textbook example of fake news here in Nicaragua or fake news about Nicaragua. You talk about Nicaragua in the United States and you're going to get people claiming that there is a canal imminent, already underway, practically in operation, inevitable, and going to take over the world. It's going to destroy Panama. It's going to destroy the American economy and China is going to dominate the world because of it. You would not believe how often we hear this incredibly ridiculous story that doesn't take into account any of the actual geography, financing, or geopolitical moves necessary to do something so crazy, nor does it make any sense at all because it wouldn't do the things it's supposed to do. Anyway, none of that's important. That is an example of a rumor that we've had for many years that uh, is simply in no way true. But we do have some rumors or news items of relative recent nature that are in a very different category. The first of those, we're gonna move a little bit because the sun here is just weird. I mean, that's a little bit better, I don't know. No matter what, it's a little bit bright. I got morning sun and I'm not used to getting to film in the morning, so I'm getting completely different light today and I don't know how to adjust for it. So I, I just, I'm getting going so early in the day, it's throwing me all off. So the big one that people have been talking about and is definitely real is the Pacific Coast Highway. We've mentioned that a number of times. People have asked questions about it and many of my viewers have uh, talked in detail about the plans and many of them have actually seen the work happening in person. This is construction that's very clearly underway and lots of people have witnessed it and know exactly where it's going and, and all that the engineering's well in process. So that's way beyond rumor status into actually implementation underway. So that we know is coming. Exactly where it's going to go, what it's going to do, there's still a lot of questions about what it's going to do in the future, but that is a real infrastructure upgrade that we expect to be focused, um, I believe, primarily on tourism. There is some uh, rumor that they're working to try to use it to in enhance uh, access for fishing villages to, to create a little bit more of a uh, agricultural economic opportunity there. Exactly what the goals are and which are the primary versus secondary goals, those things are still in somewhat of dispute, but the the concept that the road is going in is concrete. That is happening. And yes, pun intended. What we just received two days ago as news, and this is a really big deal, and I've, I've verified this with several sources. So at least that the news being released, we're very confident that this is the official announcement. Whether it will actually happen in the long term, we don't know. But that is that Nicaragua has signed a memorandum of understanding with uh, a company in China to begin the actual construction of the, and we've been asking for this. I have said so many times that this is needed, logical, going to do wonderful things for the country. So in every way, I personally, one, want this to happen, and two, have said it made sense, and that is the construction of the railroad between Managua and Granada, which would of course pass through Messiah. It connects three of the largest metro areas in the country over an incredibly short distance, but would alleviate some of the biggest traffic problems in the country and some of the biggest issues for tourists because the airport is at Managua and the uh, tourist center is at Granada and Messiah has a lot of great stuff in between. It is the absolute tourist path and it is only about a 30 to 45 minute drive and a train could do it in 20 minutes, uh, but there's a lot of traffic on that road and it's very difficult to sell. Nicaragua is a tourist destination 
I, this is an overstatement of how hard this is to overcome, but it, it requiring people to fly into Managua and get a taxi or private car to take them to Granada, which is the obvious destination for nearly all tourists coming into the country, is kind of absurd. Any normal tourist country would have a direct train that goes from their airport to wherever the tourists need to go because tourists don't want to deal with taxis. They don't want to be learning a bunch of new things. They want to get into solid, predictable, can't go wrong public transportation and zip to their tourist destination. That is being solved, we're told, in the immediate term. This is going in right away. I think it is brilliant and obvious and going to be a wonderful thing. I will, as soon as that is in, I'm going to go ride it just to film it. But I'm sure it's going to be a long time before it goes in. They have to build the railroad. But Nicaragua has an existing rail infrastructure. They just tore all the rails out, which we'll talk about in a history lesson at some point in the future. But the space allotted to the railroads is often still in place. And in many cases, the train stations are still in place. So there is a, a well understood engineering effort that was already completed back when Nicaragua was a rail country. Uh, and they simply need to use that again, in theory, I don't know if they're going to keep the same routes, but that potentially exists for them. The station in Granada, for example, is a museum today and could easily be converted back to being the station. It is, for those who don't know, on the north side of the city at the Park of the Poets or uh, Parque de Poetas, uh, which is right next to where we used to live. We used to go there all the time, so we would see it regularly, and we were always so sad that that passenger rail line was gone. In the same memorandum or involved with the same thing, they are also talking about a future project which is not yet confirmed. This one is an engineering effort to determine the feasibility, which is probably true that they are determining the feasibility. And I've also said that par at least part of this was needed, not all of it, is that they want to connect most likely a freight line. That first one is most likely a passenger line, and they showed pictures of passenger stations. The next one is most likely a uh, mixed-use line, I hope, but definitely a cargo line from Corinto to Bluefields. Currently, Corinto is the only deep water port in Nicaragua, and we've been told that one of the infrastructure upgrades already underway is the dredging of Bluefields to make a second deep water port, that time on the Caribbean. That would give us two really important ports, uh, because currently functioning with only Corinto and only Pacific access is a major deterrent to manufacturing and certain types of import-export in Nicaragua, because we can't get easily shipped to places like Europe, Africa, or even Miami, because we have to ship things through Panama or drive them to one of the ports in Honduras and able to get them out, to be able to get them out. So this is a huge deal for Bluefields to gain that port, but getting access to Bluefields is very difficult. For that port to really be useful, either a uh, highway taking a lot of trucks is required, and there is a new road going out there, but it's a long way for trucks to go, and there's only one destination, or a railroad could significantly upgrade that port and make it a, a really big deal for the country. So we're hopeful that that's really gonna happen. That will lower the cost of goods and ease the speed and, and just all kinds of logistics as far as getting things in and out of Nicaragua, that's a big deal and makes a lot of sense as well. Now, both of these are openly being sponsored by the Chinese Belts and Roads Project. Uh, that is something that a lot of people have said about other things going on here. And I, I want to be clear, we're not aware of any Belts and Roads projects going on in Nicaragua until now. When it's been Belts and Roads, the government immediately came out and said we're getting involved in Belts and Roads. They have signed up for it in the past, but none of that money flowed to Nicaragua previously. This is the first that China is, uh, as far as we know, putting an actual Belt and Roads project underway in Nicaragua. So we're very excited about that. And yes, there are concerns, of course, with how Belt and Roads works. But the idea of Belt and Roads is that by being a good partner, China is encouraging trade by doing things with partner countries that encourages trade with China. It is not, uh, it does not require the government of a country participating in the system to suddenly do anything that China wants them to do. It doesn't work that way. At least it has not historically. There's no reason to believe so. The United States spreads a lot of propaganda about that. There's no question that China does Belt and Roads to promote Chinese uh, friendship and Chinese influence throughout the world, they are clear that that is what they are doing, but that they require countries that participate in it to simply give up all kinds of control of their government to China is not the case. They are not buying access to the Nicaraguan government. So uh, that is potentially a really good project. Of course, if the United States had wanted to come in and sponsor something like that, they were free to do so. They didn't want to do so. China, over a many period of many years, was convinced to do so by Nicaragua. So Take that however you want. Uh, so those projects are real, that uh, one railroad is going in, and as far as we know, like it could be canceled, it could, but it really looks like it's happening, and the other is being researched. Also that was announced this week is the 
upgraded airport at Punta Huete, which is part of the Departamento of Managua, but it is not anywhere near in any way whatsoever the city of Managua. The Departamento of Managua is quite large, and it encompasses the majority of Lago Managua. Hence the name. So in Lago Managua, there is a peninsula on the north side. The city of Managua sits on the south side. That peninsula on the north side is very, very empty, and it's mostly farmland. But on there is the airport of Punta Huete. That is very close to the seaport or the lake port of San Francisco, which is one of the tiniest ports in all of mankind, but it does exist and it is a location. Uh, that airport is, we are told, being upgraded so it can become an international airport. Basically like Costa Rica has San Jose, its main airport at the capital, and Liberia in the north as a secondary airport, Nicaragua is doing something similar. This is still in the Managua zone, so it seems like, isn't this too close to Managua? However, I don't think it is. This airport, if it does what we believe it is going to do, and it really does get upgraded, will one, it will relieve Managua from needing to grow in the middle of a very large city. Managua Airport Airport would be relieved of some of its capacity and make it much easier for it to not have to expand because it has no space to really expand where it is. It's con it's in the middle of the city. It would also allow a number of flights to go into the north of the lake, which is important because a lot of the population of Nicaragua is north of the lake. In fact, about half of it, or at least to the west of the lake. For cities like Leon, it would be roughly equidistant to both airports, but we would not have to deal with going through the city of Managua in order to get to Punta so it's the same distance, but a much easier drive. So that would eliminate a lot of the traffic and a lot of the congestion and a lot of the airport needs. It could be a good move just from that alone. Chinandega would actually be closer to Punta Huete. And much more importantly, it would be the airport for Matagalpa, Hinotega, and Esteli, cutting one to two hours off of their travel time to the airport and giving them uh, no need to go into the city of Managua whatsoever. Because of its place on the peninsula, I predict, I am in no way been told this by anyone, simply my knowledge of the geography says that the port or Porto San Francisco on the south side of that peninsula, I'm sorry, I'm in direct sunlight, I am sweating like crazy. It's really pleasant out this morning, but the sun is baking me out here and I'm in dark colors, so I'm just cooking. Um, that port will be upgraded because there is a major port at Managua, but has very few places to go. Most of the shipments coming out of Managua simply go out to the lake and back in. It's a passenger port, uh, mostly used for luxury travel to the island. There is also Porto Mombotumbo in Leon. Between the northern port, the western port, and the southern port, if those were slightly upgraded to add ferry service, which Nicaragua has been adding ferry service on the other lake uh, just in the last few months, so we know these infrastructure projects are really happening, Having one on that lake could mean that short taxi drives from Leon or relatively easy bus rides from the northern cities, the Matagalpa, Hinotega, and Esteli Trio that we mentioned, could go to one of those two ports, and Chinandega could use the other port as well, and then take ferry traffic into Managua. That could change the relationship of many of those cities with Managua by moving to more centralized, traditional, large infrastructure ferry and rail service instead of buses, which is what they rely on today. And that stuff could do a lot for tourism, for expats, and for those far-flung cities to have a stronger connection um, to the country as a whole. Buses sometimes don't function the best for some of those things. So we're really excited about some of the potential that could be happening with these things. So the current things that we know that are happening, new ferries have gone in. That's actually a month or two old, so we didn't mention it really, but on Lago Nicaragua, Xolitlan, the large one, I'm sorry, Cholet Lawn is Managua. The large one in the south, Lago uh, Nicaragua with Ometepe, new ferry service out of Granada has gone in there, which is important. And we had mentioned this as one of the reasons why a train was good now, because now all the way from Managua to Ometepe will be connected by non-bus public transportation. The big infrastructure stuff will go all the way to the island. That's a big deal. And that means that you can also take that ferry to Rivas. So that's all the way to Rivas, which is the city near San Juan del Sur all connected by this new big infrastructure, some of which is in place, some of which is underway. From Costa Rica up to Rivas, more or less, is all being connected by the new Pacific Coast Highway. And I assume that the Pacific Coast Highway will take a turn and hit Rivas at some point, simply because you need a city along the route and it's very, very close. I don't know that that is true, but it makes a lot of sense. So that will basically connect, whether it actually connects or nearly connects, from Costa Rica all the way to the airport at Managua, all by current infrastructure projects that are well underway or the new railroad that seems to be starting. The uh, dredging of the port at Bluefields is going to be a really big deal, but it really is going to benefit from that secondary railroad if that really happens to move things throughout the country. 
These are exciting projects and really represent a lot of opportunity for Nicaragua to grow in the future. And they mirror what Nicaragua has been doing in the past, which is for the last uh, roughly five years, they have had a massive investment in infrastructure rather than in tourism, which is what they were doing prior to that time. Up through 2017, they're really focused on pushing the tourism industry. Now they've been pushing on building out the infrastructure of the country. This is just more of that. It all makes sense. All of these moves seem incredibly logical from a government that is trying very hard to do what makes sense for moving people and goods around a country of this nature. So we're very excited about that. That is our topic for today. Hopefully that was educational and interesting. I don't have time frames on any of these projects. Nicaragua doesn't tend to predict time. They just get started and do things as they can. Um, so often things get done faster than you would think, but they can't give you a schedule ahead of time. That's just the way Nicaraguans work. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe if you like to help support this channel and make it possible for me to bring more news and items and pits of interest and, and information on how to move to, live in, travel in, visit Nicaragua and other places around Latin America. Buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. It is very much appreciated. It makes all this possible. It takes quite a bit to put out the show every day. As always, share on social media. Tell your friends and family about the show. Get the word out there. Help us grow the audience. And I will see all of you tomorrow.